Hello friends, today I'm going to solve lead code problem number 55, jump cane. In this problem, we are given an array of integers nums and our initial position is at the first index, which is at index 0 here. And then what we need to do is, um, we need to find if we can reach the last index from the first index. And the value at each index represents the maximum jump that we can make from that index. So now let's see how we could solve this problem. Um, so we have been given this example. Let me use this example here. So what we do is we start from index 2. Uh, I mean index 0 index which has a value of 2. Which means that we could either jump of length 1 or we could jump length 2 to this index now let's suppose we jump uh, length 2 so what I reach is here I reach here right now from here how many uh, I can only jump one length so I reach this position and from this position again I can jump and reach my um, goal right this is the end that where I need to reach. So since now I have reached this position, so I'll return a true value. If not, I would have returned a false. If in case this was a value zero, then I could not reach from here. I couldn't. I won't be able to reach my goal, right? So what what we are gonna do is, um, we are gonna use a DFS problem, DFS solution. So what I do is, um, I backtrack from here. So I backtrack from here because it's zero. I cannot go anywhere from here. So I backtrack from here and then again I backtrack from here as well because that was the path I took. Now what I do is I take the another path that is from here I go to index 1. I only take off length 1 and go to index 1. Now from 3 I take 3 jumps and I reach my goal so i have reached the goal so i return it true so that will be a recursive solution this will be a recursive solution and uh, yeah let me just show you in a tree um so we start from index zero and how many jumps can we make from index zero i can jump of maximum of length two i can jump length two i can jump one as well so when i jump length two i reach index number two I jump from length one i reach index number one right now from index two how many jumps can i make so this is zero one two so i from index two i can only make a jump of one so only of one and i reach index three now what about index 3? Index 3 has a value 0. So from there I cannot reach my goal. So I just backtrack from here and then backtrack from here. And now I reach. <clears throat> what I do is I take only one jump from index 0. And then when I take a jump of 1, how many jumps can I make at index 1? When I reach index 1, I can jump 3 maximum of three jumps right which is equals to one two and a value three if i make a jump of one then what's the value um well basically let me we will start from the maximum jump that we could make because here we are starting from the maximum two one three two one so maximum jump that i can make is a value three when i jump uh three index so where do i reach one plus 3 which is equals to 4 so i reach the index 4 which is our um, end index right so i return a true value from here um so this is the recursive method but um the time complexity of this method would be with o of n squared uh, n to the power n so now let me let us just uh what we could do here is we could actually um use dynamic programming that is use cache to store our result let's see what uh, happens when we use the cache or how could we use the cache so uh, let me use this example to show you the use of cache now we start from index zero the number of jump maximum jump i can make is three 
and I can also jump two. I can also jump one, right? So from three, where do I reach? I reach index three. Index three, the value here is equals to zero. So I cannot reach anywhere. So I return a false. Now from index two, where can I reach? Um, me, I, I mean from index two, I make a jump of one, right? So I make a jump. I reach uh, index two and from two, from two I can make a jump of only one so from two I make a jump of one value one and then I reach index three and we know index three is the value false so we return a false from here now let's suppose this value was equals to one so what happens is from index zero I'm making a jump of one I reach index one right now index one has a value one so which means that the maximum jump i can make is of value one and making a jump of one from index one i reach index number two so now we know index two we have already calculated uh, the value for index two right and we know the final result for index two is that we cannot reach the end goal so we return a false for index two so instead of recalculating it from this branch what we do is we store the value in our cache memory and then uh, we retrieve the value from our cache so we retrieve that value from our cache and then we return a false so basically um, none of the branches led us to our goal so we, our final answer will be a false and this answer this solution will take us o of n time complexity so let's dive into coding this solution So we need a DP, a memory to store our results, right? Of length n. Let's fill all of the values with the value minus one. And um, if we are not able to reach the goal, then we will store the value zero there. If we are, then we will store the value one. And basically, if we are able, then we'll just return it. Break from the loop and return. So now let us define our function. need is the index i and we need to check if i is equal to the last index then return true that is return a one else if um is that we could jump out of uh the jump out of the like the last index suppose the value here was equals to five then where would we reach five means one plus five is equals to six then we would reach out of bound and that is uh, in that case we will just return go back and perform our recursive function again keep on uh, performing the recursion so if n equals to i mean i is greater than equals to n return false return zero and then again if we have already found the value of index i then we need to return dp of i that is it should not be equals to minus one now what we do is um for maximum value we can maximum values right we transfer how many times starting from the maximum value we can jump three to one times right so that is what we do here starting from let k is equals to nums of um i and then k is greater than zero k minus minus and what we do is dp of i plus k is equals to okay helper i plus k and then if dp of i plus k is true that is if it is equals to one which means that we have reached our 
go then we return return a one else we keep on repeating now until unless we uh, do not reach else we return a false that is equals to zero and then finally let's make our call at index zero let's try to run and see okay it's returning our value so we return it from here also we need to keep track if we reach the index with zero value if that's the case then also we are not going to reach our goal so we return a false so if nums i is equals to zero then return zero now let's run our code great let's submit it cool so that was one way to solve this problem the other way to solve this problem is by using greedy method as well so let me just show you that method uh, let's use this example so what we are going to do here is we start from the very end instead of starting from the first index zero what we do is we start from the end because this is our goal right so we we assume this uh, we um, start from our goal and then we go backwards now we know uh, to reach here we if we start from here what is the maximum number of steps that we need to reach our goal which is equals to uh, one right so since this value is at least one that is greater than or equals to one um, we are able to reach our goal from this so what we do is now we set this value as our goal that is we set this value as mark this value as um as an index from which we can reach our goal so now this becomes our goal next what we do is we move to we start from uh, another in, uh, to the previous index we move to the previous index and then the value here is also equals to one and from this index we could reach our goal right so next what we do is we start from the previous one and these values also at least is greater than or equals to one and in that case also we can reach our goal so we keep on doing until we reach our zero to index and from zero to index also we can reach our goal right so that is when we know that we are able to reach our goal um to the very end and then finally return a true now let's try to code this as well so we start from the end okay and which is equals to n minus one and i must be greater than equals to zero i minus minus so initially our goal goal is equals to n minus one right at index n minus one so if what we do is we check the value at index i if it is greater than or equals to um, the index of our goal yeah so from index i making a jump of these if we can reach our goal then um, then we can reach our goal which means that now we update our goal equals to um index i and we return if goal is equals to zero index zero let's submit it so this solution will be of of n time complexity and zero space complexity so yep 